In this video, we're going to go through building and deploying your Azure Data Factory pipelines using Vim or Flex. So in the previous uh, video, if you haven't watched it, I, I recommend going to watch it. But in the previous video, we've gone through and configured our, you know, all of our connections and projects and, and batches and things so that we can actually use that to now move data across. So we've gone ahead and, you know, configured all of that. Um, what we're going to do in this one is we're going to build the code out and deploy it to Azure Data Factory. That's going to effectively build out the copy um, command, uh, the copy pipelines. That's going to move the data from your um, adventure works in this case, copy, move the data into a SQL database or a Azure SQL database, depending on which options you've chosen, um, and then have all the code deployed to run the source of staging uh, stored procedures here. Um, not going to go through this in detail. Please watch the previous video and you'll find all the information there about how the landing area works and you know how to configure that up. So I'm going to go straight into a Bimoflex demo and just show you how easy and simple it is to deploy this um, your pipelines. Okay, so we're going to use the same metadata that we finished off with in our previous session where we've gone ahead and taken the connection. So just a quick recap, we've basically taken our sample metadata here um, the, the getting started one, we've taken that one and we've gone, gone ahead and configured all of our connections here to be cloud enabled for Azure Data Factory and Azure Data Factory link services here using a key vault called Bimbleflex. Again, you can have your own key vault name there and we've got all the connections configured. So before we start into getting build and deploy, there's a couple of settings that you want to um, set for your uh, data factory environment. The first one is obviously which what is a data factory name. So we're going to go ahead into settings here and we're going to just go and search here for Azure Data Factory, Azure Data Factory name, and we're going to you put in your Azure Data Factory name. That is could be anything. In my case, my Azure Data Factory name is actually called Bimbleflex. I got in there first, so I chose Bimbleflex. So I've got an Azure Data Factory called Bimbleflex. The next two settings you want to do is your subscription ID and your resource group. Now you don't have to put this in your metadata if you don't want to, but it, you know if you're going to build out and run your deployments a lot, um, we'd recommend putting this in. And this would probably be your dev the development environment anyway. So again, we go in here, and I'm just going to call you know look for my subscription, and there's my subscription ID. So I'm going to pop in my subscription ID here, and I'll save that. And the next thing I'm going to do is, is add my resource uh, group. So I'm just going to type in the word re, oops, resource here. Oh, that's not good. And I'll get my resource group here. I'm going to drop in my resource group here. And I'll save that. So there's the three settings. My Bimbleflex, uh, my Azure Data Factory name, my subscription ID, and my resource group. Once I've set that up, I effectively have all of the metadata that I need to build that Azure Data Factory. So let's go ahead here and now start building a solution up. So again, I'm going to build do something very simple here. I'm going to connect to AdventureWorks LT. I'm going to hit the Import Metadata button here, Connect to Database, and I'm just going to select all of these tables because I just want to go and grab some data and land it. Don't worry about any of the stuff here if you just want to kind of follow along. The, all of this is documented on our website, what every single one of these do if you want to apply naming conventions and things like that. So I go ahead and hit the Import button brings all the metadata from that source into my database. So if I now look at the project here, you'll see that I've got my 10 tables here. Um, you know, I've got all of the metadata associated with it. I can go and mess around with the metadata here and add additional SQL statements. I have all my columns here and I can go and work with that. But for the landing data, you know, we're just going to grab that data and land it into a database here. Again, if you want to just have a quick look at your schema view, you can have a, you, know, you can just select all your tables, oops, select all your tables, and get a bit of an overview of your AdventureWorks solution. As you can see here, this is just a very standard AdventureWorks LT solution. So now I have enough metadata just by importing the metadata. And if you've got a fairly clean system with enough relationships, Pimbleflex will then know in what order it needs to extract and land the data. So I've got enough information here by just importing the metadata to can actually go and land that data using Azure Data Factory. So I'm going to jump over to Bimble Studio, which is where I'm going to show you how to deploy that code out. Okay, so I'm in Bimble Studio here right now. Just to clarify one thing, um, with our build and deployment, you can do everything through continuous integration. So you'll never really have to come into this tool. I just want to show you around of what the assets look like before we build it out. So just having to import that metadata, we, we really just get um, our landing, you know, we get a visual uh, representation of what we're going to build out. So we're going to get our landing tables, our persistent staging tables here, our staging tables, no integration services. 
here's my data factory with the data factory name, all my link services that I've created here, my key vault. Um, then I've got all my data sets here. Um, and then I've got my copy command here going down, kind of create my batches, create all my copy pipelines. Um, and then we're going to deploy that to, uh, to Azure Data Factory. So all I'm going to do right now is I'm just going to go ahead and build it. Now, again, you can, the, the build stuff is all done through, um, you know, command lines, hit the build button, and it's going to start outputting the assets into the, the, the output folder that I've configured here. So it's all going to start coming in here, all of my data factories, my de deployment scripts and everything else that I need. So as you can see here, um, what's being created here is a data factories folder with the name of my data factory. And inside of this, there's a couple of different files here. The first one is the ARM templates. So using Azure Data Factory or Azure portal to deploy the ARM template. And we're going to do this using a PowerShell script. We also output all the individual JSON files. So if you wanted to do Azure Data Factory with Git integration, you could use all of these JSON files. And we have a number of customers that actually runs um, Git integration instead of deploying the ARM templates there. So I'll go back up a couple of folders here. We'll have a deploy folder. Here we, we create the build scripts. So if you want to um, run the builds through continuous integration or um, command line, you can run and go into the build scripts here. The, all of your settings and configurations are there. Again, very, very well documented on our website. And lastly, we have the deploy files here. So you'll have uh, a number of uh, PowerShell scripts here. You'll have one that's going to, if you're running you know, any SQL base or Microsoft uh, SQL server base like Synapse or SQL DB or, or integration runtime, uh, not integration, managed instance, you'll have a SQL server data tools deployment project here that'll use a DAC pack to deploy your code. And then we'll have the Azure Data Factory deployment PowerShell script here. So let me go ahead and use PowerShell to open up this uh, deployment uh, file here. Okay, so I'm going to quickly open up this file here, which is my Azure Data Factory deployment file. And all this is going to do is actually going to go ahead and run that ARM template with any parameters that I have to configure in that file here. So let me just go ahead here and click run. And this goes ahead and deploys my Azure Data Factory, all my Azure Data Factory assets up, up to the cloud. Okay, so the deployment has been successful. It's gone up to my Azure Data Factory here. And let me show you inside of the portal what that looks like right now. So if I look at my Azure Data Factory, uh, let's get some more screen real estate here. There will be all my batches here. And again, in the batch file, in the batches here, you'll have these numbered batches. So what we do um, at Bimal Flex do is we actually calculate how many uh, copy activities you want or how many pipelines you have. And we calculate how many batches you need to conform to um, the 40 uh, the current 40 uh, limit on um, activities in a pipeline that's in Azure Data Factory. So we will calculate that for you. We know we'll break up all the batches for you into sub batches. And then here is all your individual copy activities. Um, and again, if you look at those, it's very, very simple, you know, copy the, copy the data into the landing area and then put it into the staging environment there. So all of that is pre-configured for you. So as you can see, it is very easy to configure your, uh, connections, uh, your Azure Data Factory link services, and then import some metadata, build and deploy that into Azure Data Factory. And, you know, in the space of, you know, a couple of minutes, you actually have the ability to now start running some Azure Data Factory pipelines. Thank you for watching.